So maze around the corner, spring is here, it's time for a new bullet journal spread, right? And since bees are flying everywhere, this time it's bee themed! <laughs> we all love bees in our family, my darling alpha male is a beekeeper, kids love honey, we love honey and everything bee related and I think other people like bees as well, so let's, why not make a bee bullet journal? It's fun! <laughs> This one is not just my usual drawing and watercoloring afterwards. It is full of techniques. Uh, we'll use die cuts, we'll use stamps, we'll use stencils. So you'll be able to jump along and follow along and create beautiful spreads even if you're not much of a drawer maybe. So far. <laughs> so let me show you how. I decided on the design beforehand and sketched tiny and very loose thumbnails as usual, but this time bearing in mind that I want to use the Dutch door so the motif on the right should be big enough. I sketched my B and the rough guide where the rest should go, but I changed the position later, so don't worry too much about that. And now I'm just outlining my sketch, adding details and here you can see me drawing a calendar in honeycomb hexagon that I drew with the help of my compass. Just like we did in school, remember? I always loved geometry and I still use it to this day. <laughs> Here's the proof. I messed the calendar though. I don't know why I was convinced that the May starts on Saturday. Oh well, I might fix that later. But I rarely look at that calendar on my cover, so I make no promise. <laughs> now here I apologize, the page is already painted because the power went off and so did my poor camera that needed juice. Our neighbors had something done with electricity and the whole street got the power turned off for freaking four and a half hours. No notice beforehand. It was quite stressful. <laughs> so sorry that part's not recorded. It took me a while before I noticed. I wrote the title freehand, no sketch, no guidelines, nothing because now I was in a hurry to catch the daylight. I can work at night, no problem, but filming is so much easier during the day. As you might have noticed, I'm not the most skilled videographer, so lighting and stuff is a challenge for me. <laughs> now on to the Dutch door. For those of you who don't know, Dutch door is a technique where you partially cut one page out so it opens and you can see both at the same time. It's pretty widely used in bullet journal community, but I haven't used it before. If the motif is very easy, you could cut it with scissors, but mine needed scalpel or exacto knife. In this case, you need to put some kind of protection underneath the sheet so you don't cut into the next page as well. I have a small cutting mat that came with eyelet setter, I think, and I recommend having a really sharp blade for this. I have changed mine for a new blade during the process and it was so much easier afterwards. When my page was cut and I removed the other part, I continued the red from the previous page onto the next one so it looks nice and cohesive. In the middle part where you fold out the bee I wanted to have my monthly. So I found some packaging from art supplies and used that cardboard to die cut my honeycomb from. List of exact supplies is in the blog post link below if anybody is interested. Since this die made thin stripes I needed to make more to have enough for the whole month. Now I want to piece it together. Because this cardboard is quite thick. I did not want to overlap it because that would make the page bulky and difficult to write on the next page. So I cut the overhanging parts from one honeycomb and glued them together. Similarly I cut the pieces in the middle so they don't add bulk to the middle of the spine. And now I'm just arranging pieces so that they make 31 honeycomb compartments. Which was a bit tricky because I only had this one piece of scrap cardboard and I couldn't make more. So I had to think twice how I'll cut it to get all of the days. But it all worked out in the end. Sort of. You can still see a little bit of honeycomb peeking from the bee but it's not too distracting. I numbered the days with my technical pen or you could use fine liner in black and added more flowers and leaves to the red on all sides. For my mood tracker or it could actually track anything else, I'm thinking of dedicating it to something else because I never use mood trackers but I love making them. So rather than stop doing them, I might just repurpose them. Well, I used a honeycomb stencil. This one is from Scrapberries. It's an old one but you could use any stencil with small compartments. Or you can even make your own. I clipped it to my page so it doesn't move while I'm working. That's a really nice tip I just discovered. 
Probably many, many other people have already used it, <laughs> but I haven't learned it yet, so I hope this helps you too. I applied ink from the stamp pad with the makeup brush. I never ever use makeup, but I bought these brushes specifically for this purpose after I learned that they work great, and they really do. But a piece of foam would also work if you don't have them, or a stencil brush or any other tool that does this job. I added the days and a very, very wonky title. I was still in a hurry for the daylight. <laughs> and the highlights for the headers of my habit in this ochre yellowish color and started drawing honeycombs for my habit tracker below. Now I learned that the month starts on Monday. <laughs> I just winged it and rushed it so they are very very wonky but I didn't mind that much. They just have to be there so I can cross things off. If you have a small honeycomb stamp you could use that or be very pedantic and make very nice hexagons. I finished the rest of them afterwards because I wanted to film everything else and didn't know how long that would take me. The light again. I stamped some bees and bumblebees to the spreads in black archival ink. I chose this ink pad because it's waterproof so I can come back and add some watercolor on top if I so choose. And because I have just searched my craft room for stamps, I found these beautiful bee stamps and I just had to use them. Since Bray Dump is the freest of the spreads, I could just play around. As you can see, the ink didn't transfer well where the clip was, because I didn't notice it, so I removed the clip and repositioned the stamp. That can be quite tricky. I put the beehive in one corner and the queen bee diagonally to it so that the composition would be balanced. Then I added the flying bees all around. Nothing fancy, nothing you would need to think twice about. Very simple. Again, I used archival ink in case I would want to color anything later. But the stark black seemed too strong for these delicate images, so I stamped them in this orangey color. I stenciled the edges with the same honeycomb stencils, so the stamps blend into the page a little bit. And here's the final flip through! I'm quite pleased with this one. It has many techniques I haven't tried in bullet journal before and they seem to work together nicely. I usually just draw, but stamping really cuts down the time you have to put into a spread. So if you have some stamps lying around in the theme you would like for spring, go for it. I do admit that the ink can bleed through the pages and I'll show you how I will deal with that next week when I'll make my weeklies. So come and see. I would love to show you more, so do subscribe so we can hang out together. I read all the comments and I always answer, so let me know if you have any questions. See you next week! Bye bye!